I'm like stressing out. I know I shouldn't be doing this to myself. I do this a lot right now. And I was like, man, this would be a good time right before a trip to start working on something. Guys, learn from my mistakes. Please do not do a last minute costume for the sake of God. Like I've had this one planned for a long time and then I just didn't do it. Okay, let's try this. See, I'm already using the pattern I used for my boo et. I have this material and I realized I didn't have enough of it, so I went out and bought the closest color to it, which unfortunately is this weird velvet. I think it's like a crepe velvet. It's not exactly the same, but it's okay. And then I'm going to be using the remnants of my Eevee costume. And then I also have this material right there from Joann's to make my sash. You might be wondering who I'm working on right now, and here's the quickest answer I can give you. I am going to be working on the ever so gorgeous Maria Renard from Castlevania. And I'm just like, this outfit right here is what I need. This gives me life. Look how beautiful that is. So that's what I'm going to be making. And then of course I have my owl up here. Do you see him? It's Hedwig. I'm going to be starting with the easiest part first, and that's the gold sash. I'm going to open up this remnant of the gold brocade and unfold it and see how much I really have. Even though the packaging says how much there is, sometimes you really just need to open up and see for yourself. Because this has been rolled up for so long, I'm going to have to iron it out. Ironing your fabrics before you start cutting them is highly recommended. Having super flat fabric is going to help you find the fold and cut evenly. Because I only had about half a yard of this material, I decided to cut it into fourths. So what I did was I folded it in half, ironed it down to get a nice fold, so when I cut it in half, it'll be symmetrical. I did this again so I can create fourths. This way, I only need to cut this fabric three times, one in the middle and then two on the sides. Once I had everything cut out, I needed to sew them together first. I wanted to create a very nice tube this way that whenever the fabric got turned around, it's still the beautiful shiny side versus having the off side show up. So I sewed these pieces together to create one very long strip. I want these pieces together first so I can hide the seams on the inside. Now that the four pieces of fabric are sewn into one long strip, I'm going to fold that strip in half and sew that together, creating the tube. Once I sewed down the entire tube, I had to flip it inside out so the seam was on the inside and was not showing any raw edges on the outside. Lastly, to finish the strap, I made sure to give it one last good iron so it will lay flat and look beautiful. The sash was really puffy when I finished sewing it, so hitting it with the iron made it look even better. This gives it a nice finishing edge and the seam is pressed in the middle, so it is hidden from when I wear it. I didn't have a lot of this fabric, my friend Larni gave it to me. And it's about a yard and a half with only a 45 width. So a 45 inch width does not help me at all. So I'm going to continue cutting out the pattern as minimal as possible so I can get a flared skirt on the bodice. You've seen me work with this pattern before, so I'm going to go ahead and skip to pass the sewing and show you what it looks like assembled. So this is what it looks like so far, and the corset part is created. I need to add a zipper in the front and the rest of this bottom part into the skirt. The back is looking pretty clean. I did do some tests with some embroidery designs here. I think it looks really nice. I wish it was a little bit thicker, 
but you know, beggars can't be choosers when we're on a time crunch. So I'm excited to try to finish that. Here you can see that I played around with a few different designs. I think I'm just gonna go with the basic stitch versus trying something complicated. Here I went back and used a pattern for the bottom part. The bottom part just needs a skirt piece kind of thing. Now we just gotta cut that bad boy out. Now that I got the first one cut out, I'm going to use it as a template for the second one. Now all I have to do is sew one side together. Even though they're the same piece of fabric, the hemline got messed up somehow. So I lined them up together at the top and then I cut off a base like centimeter or two off the bottom hemline. I wanted the skirt part to maintain its shape so I will be using horsehair braid. In a previous video, I showed you how to add horsehair braid to a hemline. I'll link it in the description box and in the cards. But most importantly, it's very easy to do. Just make sure it's at the very edge, sew it together, and then you flip it over kind of like bias tape. I made sure to add the skirt to the bodice. I found the center back of the bodice and the center back of the skirt and lined them up together. Luckily, the skirt had a seam for the center back, so all I had to do was pin it together and then sew the rest down. Maria's top has some detailing at the edges. I decided not to add lace, but instead do an embroidery stitch, and I did that on top of the horsehair braid, and then I did it at the edges of the other parts of the outfit. Bowser, what are you doing here? You looking at my project? This is all the scraps that I have right now. It is not that much. I can only use this probably for the ribbons now. So what we're going to do is throw that aside and wait. We got to finish the dress top and this I'm going to be using this fabric which is a type of velour. I'm very disappointed that they didn't have the exact same type but I think this will be very nice. It's only three meters. All right. I'm also going to be using this pattern for the sleeves and you know what that means. It's time to cut it out. So we're going to fast forward this segment. Here I'm adding front facing to the top of the bodice. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want the hemline to take away from the actual shape. So I'm adding scrap fabric and sewing it down, kind of like bias tape. I went ahead and measured out some inner facing and then iron it down onto the brown fabric. This is going to create the cuffs that I need for my sleeves and for the collar. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on interfacing, make sure to leave me a comment down below asking for it. Once I finished adding the interfacing and making sure that they had fabric on both sides, I attached them to the sleeves and the collar of the bodice. Oh my goodness, um, I forgot to completely keep filming, but I finished the jacket. I also made a separate piece for the ruffle here. I didn't want to keep the ruffle actually attached, so I'll probably just shove it in prior. And um, I think I'm going to bring one of the blonde wigs that I just washed. And then I'm going to just have to make the gloves. So I have this brown taffeta somewhere in here. 
and I'll be using this for my gloves. Because this is stretchy fabric, I'm just doing the turkey glove hand method and sewing it down. Whew, it is now 5.40 a.m. of May 30th, and I just wanted to show you, I finished this much of the actual outfit, so I can't wait to put it on and travel with this and show you the power of not procrastinating. And let's get there. Look at my brand new cosplay! I'm Maria Renard from Castlevania, Cynthia of the Night. Obviously, eh, we didn't know much about what we wanted to do down below because I'm not going to wear high heels. But, you know, knees up and perfect. <laughs> I also brought Hedwig with me, so we're going to have some fun photo shoots. I'm going to go this castle right here! <laughs> I'm excited. I don't care if people look at me. I know I'm weird. They know I'm a foreigner, so that's all that matters. And I'll just be all like, oh, I'm bitch. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you had a lot of fun watching me create this last minute cosplay and me cosplaying at Castle Dracula in Bran, Romania. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to my channel and if you want to watch more of my videos, click on the other videos shown above. Stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye!